this clock goes back a very, very long time. This is a naval clock, you know, eight bells and all's well. This does that. And I'll demonstrate that a little later on. But uh, she's very old. Uh, this is very super heavy stuff. I don't, I think it's from the 40s, maybe 50s. And it says made in West Germany. So you know it's it's pretty old and it's real heavy. And so I'm going to uh, clean it very carefully and take that off and then you can set her up like this. So there's the brand maker. I'm going to look them up in a minute. I never have. That's the brand maker. And I got some brake clean and I've got some Lockies and I got my. I like putting little model guys up on top of my little flying saucer. I think it's funny. And I got my uh, model motoring coffee cup there. And we're going to take this thing apart. And we're going to uh, see uh, how it goes. Let's see if I can get it to do a couple of bells here for you. So, I, I, I don't know. It, it runs okay. You can hear it running. It's very quiet. That's seven bells, and it's four. It's, a watch is four hours in the Navy, and that's why you hear one bell, two bells, three bells, and if you're wondering what the bells are, this should be eight bells. So 1230 is one bell, and that's the way that works. So we're going to take it apart. I'm not going to clean the brass, boy, let me tell you. That's the way to destroy the value, but you can tell that that glass is uh, convex or concave, no matter, which, no matter how you look at it, I guess. Stalactite or stalagmite? Tites are up high and mites are down low. So anyway, who's, who's counting? So uh, we're going to take this apart and I put it on this paper down here and I'm going to spray it out and clean it. It works fairly well. I haven't had it apart in a long time. I know it was on a ship. I just don't know any other history about that. So we're, we're going to take her apart and uh, do the best we can with her. But uh, what an interesting thing. And uh, reminds me of uh, my friend Dave who was on the aircraft carrier. I try to impart my little parts of wisdom when I can. Boy, this is such a great set of tools. I don't know if you can get that anymore. Oh, I didn't look that up, did I? Never take the minute hand of any clock at all, ever, and go backwards. I uh, had a, I saw somebody do that one time. I said, don't do that. And she went ahead and did it, and she broke it. So, you know, time moves forward. It's a way to remember that. But I've seen people do that thinking that they can, you can do it, and I'm not going to tell you how, just don't do it. Uh, there, there's a trick to it on how far you can go, but it's not more than a minute or two back at any time, and never at any of the uh, quarter hour intervals, never. I don't know, I guess I was 25 years old when I bought this thing, I think for 20 bucks, $573. I don't know what the history is, I'll have to look it up, but uh, that doesn't surprise me actually. Um, I know that's asking, but uh, I was thinking a couple of hundred. Uh, let's see if I can just type in clock history. I went to Cottage Clock Shop. Uh, and there's the history of it right there. You can look it up. Cottage. Oh, no. I'm watching something else here. I don't care if you see my tabs. Uh, CottageClockShop.com. HTML. Wow. 1884. Fascinating. Okay, I'm going to read some of that. There's Cuckoo. Let's see if they go down to Maritime. I don't know. We already saw Maritime stuff. Naval, Maritime, whatever. So there's there's the name. And there it is right there. So let's, let's go in and see what we got here. Clean it up. Okay, so I got the three screws out for the face. Let's see what lives underneath here. Well, 
that does, huh? You got to be careful how far you want to go here, too, because you're ticking. You don't want to discharge the springs or anything. So, okay, well, that's all there is to that. Let's go to the back. So, the back, and I just want to spray it down with a little bit of uh, uh, brake clean stuff and just get the little metal chards out of there. Reminds me of Bob Witherspoon doing this because I used to help him with his clocks. Okay. One time I remember we were working on an old clock and a piece of shrapnel blew out of it, hit me right in the cheek. So you got to be careful about these things. These springs mean business. I actually have, uh, I had uh, this old clock back here, which is now just a $4 Chinese thing. This had the original guts in it, and I kept it going for a long time. And one of the springs broke. Well, that's that's a big deal there. Uh, it made a, made a thunderous noise. I still have... Uh, these these uh, springs Ooh, boy that's been around a while hasn't it these are very very dangerous things uh, let me open these up so if you work on these be sure and wear your eye protection so, so there's a clock spring brand new I don't know how old it is but they are bound up and once you get them set, then you release them. Because you'll never, it's sort of like a welding wire. You, know, you let that thing go, it's over. You'll be there all day. Made in India. I don't know. They come in the different sizes. But uh, I don't know how old this is, but that's, you can still get these. I don't know if you can still get them or not. I haven't looked one of these up in a long time. Don't need them. Uh, one will be for time and one will be for the chime. So that's why it comes in packs. Well, I must have used them. It must have been six in there. So. <laughs> Perfect timing. So we're at the back of the clock now. And there's the little little dinger right there. there there's where you can uh, see the, uh, the uh, I forget what they call it. Well, dinger, whatever it is. What do they call that thing? Um, the bell and clapper. A clapper. There you go. Let's take the rest of this off. So here's the little, the little uh, got an E on it or something. So there that is. Okay, let's see what else is in there. It'd be fun. Now I'm not going to go deep into this thing. I'm just trying to clean it. You know, I'm not trying to rebuild it. When you take these screws out of the back. You're taking two of the screws that hold the bell part. And here is the clock part. Now, that back plate doesn't come off. Look how dirty it is. You can see the dirt coming off right there. So, there's the, it comes out of the front. Don't uh, There's a little bit of stuff there. Don't get any brake clean on the face. Still ticking. So those springs are encased therein. Let's go over here. Seven jewels unadjusted. August, there's his name, August Schlotz, I guess. Stone 8-1 Germany, 18-1. And there's there's your plus minus thing that adjusts uh, the mechanism. You can see the uh, verge and foliate in there swinging around. So I'm just gonna just hit this lightly with some brake clean, and that's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to do that very carefully. So uh, we might just do it here. Let's just do it here. Get rid of these. Okay, let's get some paper towels. I love my paper towel dispenser. It's working pretty good. Okay. I 
just boiled me some tomatoes. So I had a long work day yesterday. I worked 30 hours straight on some equipment. So there's my tomato. I'm going to have a nice big, you see my homemade pasta for pizza. So I'm going to have a homemade tomato pizza tonight. So it's still ticking. All right, so uh, I'd rather have some. Oh, there we go. I got something to put under it. Got this old screwdriver. This is a snap-on screwdriver. I broke it the first day I got it. It's the best thing I've ever did because I use that a lot. Well, let's see if I can get it to stand up. Okay, let me go get some brake clean, and we're just gonna see what kind of falls out of it. At least I don't know how it kind of works anyway. So. When you take a clock apart, you got to be prepared for things. Hopefully it goes well. What a beautiful instrument this is. I can hear it ticking, but it's just barely. It seems quieter now that I took it out of the echo chamber there. Okay, got this stuff right here. And we're going to just... I don't want to get it on my other stuff either. Let's just hit it straight down. Let me get a test shot of this. Okay. Kind of wanted to get the feel of the nozzle here. I don't think I'm going to need any of that graphite. I'm just going to rinse it down. Okay. Going to let that dry. See the shrapnel that came out of it? Okay. Now, don't be surprised if it stops because That would be normal because it's got fluid in it now. Okay, we're going to just put this over here. We're going to let it dry. Not too close to the edge. Okay, I'm going to put it there. We're just going to let that dry. And then I'm going to shake it and then I'll start back up again, as I hope. It may never run again, but it did need a cleaning. That matters. That really matters. Okay, let's just give that a little while. Let's change this cloth out. Don't throw these in the can because they're very flammable now. It's been about an hour and I think everything's dried out and ready to go back together again. Uh, let's go over here where the light is. It's been running all this time so that's kind of a rarity for it. I think I turned the chime off. One bell, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's put her back together. Let her chime so I can get the time. No rhyme every time, I guess it looks like. So she smells clean. <laughs> and uh, let's just get her back together. Go over here. I'm so happy to know more about this thing. So I got the uh, bell back in there. So let's let's get her going. I wonder why in the world they have a sight glass or, or a sight hole just to look at the the ding donger. It's kind of strange. Okay, everything was kind of loose, so I'm kind of glad that we uh, we're going to be tightening her up. Don't think I'm gonna need more light than this. Maybe I'll just do it over there. Maybe that'd be better. Let's get her back together. We are back in the saddle here. It's ticking very strongly. And we're going to uh, let it chime and see where we are 
on the uh, our hands. I always want to call them arms. Does anybody else call them? Put them in the comments. Oh, everybody says that, so you'll comment. But uh, anyway, uh, we'll see what happens next. Let's let it. Let's let it chime. Chimer's on. That even feels better. Okay, so we'll wait till we get uh, whatever bells we are, and put the arms back on it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm not going to leave it in the barn anymore. This, this I know. It's staying up here. I've got so many things that are in the barn that I've had for so long. And it's just probably better that they're up here. So there are the uh, hands or arms. They don't look like hands. They look more like arms. Maybe that's why I think they don't. That's a hand. That's the dirt that I got out of the inside of the case. Once again, that system has paid off. So let's just let it go. Let's let it chime. Now, the whole point of this is, you know, you can't use pendulums and weights and all that other stuff at sea. You have to have, this is why the spring steel was invented, was to tell time at sea. So you can look that up on connections or... Any other uh, James Burke stuff? You can look all that up if you want to. But there's a reason why clock springs were invented, and that's because ships need to know what time it is. Okay, we'll just wait for it to do something. All right, I just got to uh, four bells, which can be two o'clock. Uh, so that's where I started from. I think that's on backwards. I don't think I like that very much. I don't know. It doesn't look right to me. I'm kind of messing with it a lot. And it, ooh. And it, uh, it keeps running. So. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to want to go on that way. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know what's the right way. But I do like that better. It just looks a little better. So this is the way it works. Every four-hour cycle. So let's just start with 12. It's not a 24-hour clock because Navy don't care about that. It's military, but it doesn't really matter. So 12 is 8 bells. 12.30 is 1 bell. 1 o'clock is 2. 1.30 is 3. 2 o'clock is 4, like we just set. And every half hour, is, you just add a bell. And then it starts on every four-hour cycle, etc., 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 and uh, this is the key, I think, for this one. I'm not sure if it was for this one or that mantel clock over there that, that was older. But let's, uh, if you take out this uh, little piece right there, it'll set up. So we're going to wait till uh, 2.30. It's not 2.30, but be careful what time it is. And I, <laughs> look at this. I found this, too. This is not for this clock because the fast slow on this is done with a screwdriver. And it'll be different now that I've cleaned it, so I'll have to see how that goes. But I found this in my little quiver. And this was for this. That's in a, I know where that is now. It's in a box down in there in the barn. I know I probably need to bring that up, but it's, it's really shot. It's hundreds of years old or hundred something. This was the fast slow for this clock that went uh, right here, but that's all gone now. But I'm gonna leave that there because it just looks cool. I'm glad to find that, put it all back together again. But, uh, like I say, uh, that never has clipped well. Let's just uh, okay, well, that's good enough. But that's a beautiful thing, and I was able to save the original arms hands on that. So, uh, okay, well, it's pizza time. I got uh, got my uh, fresh. Uh, hard cheese there, Parmesan. Got some fresh onion, fresh garlic, fresh tomatoes. Uh, my fancy red sauce, some not fresh but still good. Uh, pimento stuffed olives. And there's my dough. And uh, so, anyway, it's not 2 o'clock. What time? Okay, it's 7 o'clock. Anyway. Forgot with all these clocks, I sure don't know how to keep time, do I? Well, let's, let's uh, set the alarm on my phone and come over here and we'll listen to it chime and then we'll call that we'll call that a, a done deal
Okay, well that's eight bells. So uh, that takes care of that. That's the end of this uh, trilogy here. So let's put her back together and call this quits. I did have to use a little bit of Lockheed's in there. Not a sponsor. And uh, that goes a long way. She's been running great. And uh, got to use my Nest reversible screwdriver. That's a pretty nice screwdriver you got hold of there. And there's the wheel. Now this is the cap that goes on it. So very pleased with the entire Endeavor. Now that goes on a lot of threads because it's got to be uh, tight from seawater. See, look how, many, how long it goes on there. I looked these up. I don't think they're as expensive as I thought they were. I guess having one that works. See, it's still going. And it'll, there you go. I'm starting to feel it tighten up a little bit now. Unbelievable, isn't it? It's like ridiculous. There it goes. You can hear it. Okay, that's tight. That's how many turns it takes. So there she is. She's running fine. I'm very proud of the whole thing. So she's just like, tick tocking away. And uh, it just. Every one of these is going to be different depending on the wear patterns, I suppose. So that's it. So give us a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, ring that bell. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Back to the Healy tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, stay tuned for the crow picking out a, a paint stirrer and a little bit of a sunset. You know how... Everybody ends with flora and fauna. For some reason, this crow wants that stick. I don't know what he's going to do with it. Maybe he'll go mix some paint or something. That stick's just bugging him. <laughs> now he... Oop. wonder what he wants to do with it. He's been tugging on it and... I thought his buddy was going to help him. No, he's leaving it alone now. <laughs> well, if he comes back, I just looked up and he was pulling the stick out of the pond. Uh, almost pond. Well, maybe he's, uh, he's sizing up his options here. Wonder what he wants to do with it. Wonder what his mindset is. Crows are very brilliant animals. Oh, oh the pond is thawing. He's mad at that stick. We'll see if he does anything. <laughs> Funny.